everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber Rachel. I put out new videos every Wednesday about motherhood and lifestyle. And today's video is going to be all about the truth of postpartum recovery. There are so many things that I didn't know and that kind of blindsided me while I was going through my postpartum recovery. So I wanted to go ahead and shed some light on some of the things that I went through and hopefully prepare you guys for your postpartum recovery. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. some of the things that happened to me in the hospital right after I gave birth to my daughter. The very first thing that I noticed was that I got the shakes like super, super bad. It was like as soon as I delivered my daughter, my body was just shaking so, so bad. I think I have a video of it and if I do, then I'll go ahead and put it on the screen right now so you can see how bad I was shaking. But yeah, I was like, I was just shaking so bad and it wouldn't stop. And so I asked the doctor, I'm like, like, is this normal? Is this supposed to be happening? And the doctor said that it was 100% normal, and I guess it was because of all the hormones that was going through my body and just the huge change that I had gone through from having the baby inside of me to not having the baby inside of me all kind of contributed to me ending up having the shakes. And so the shakes were like really intense, I think the first maybe five hours or so after I had my daughter. And then it just kind of like gradually slowed down for the rest of the day. And I think by the next day they were completely gone. So I was completely taken off guard by getting the shakes. And then another thing that was just kind of like shocking, I guess to me, was the fact that my belly didn't go down all the way which I knew that it wasn't going to be like completely flat after I had my baby, but I didn't realize it was going to be as big as it was, even though I had still delivered. I'll go ahead and post pictures on the screen of what I looked like when I first got to the hospital for my induction, and then what my belly looked like immediately after birth. And then I'll have to see if I have a picture of what I looked like, I think th within the first week after I got home from the hospital. But it was like, I, like I still looked like she was inside of me, like my belly was still really huge. And it was really strange to me, and I don't really know how to describe the feeling, but it was like an empty sack almost. Like I don't, like I said, I really don't know how to describe it because it's so bizarre, but it's just like, like an empty sack. Like it was, it was so weird. But I ended up bringing my waist trainer to the hospital with me, and once I got clearance from the medical staff, I went ahead and I put on my waist trainer, and I feel like that kind of helped my belly go down a lot and kind of just helped squeeze everything back in because it is just a little bit loose feeling. So the waist trainer just kind of helped make everything feel tight again. I really do think that it helped my belly go down a lot. And by far the worst thing ever about your postpartum recovery is when the nurses come and they have to push on your belly for every single hour after you give birth. And I'm not talking like a little bit of a push. No, they literally will push so hard on your belly after you just gave birth. I swear, I was like, my nurses must be trying to like touch my spine through my belly. Like that's how hard they're pushing. I'm like dramatic, but, and so I had to like mentally prepare myself every single time I saw my nurse walk into the room because it would just hurt so bad when she would push. And she would have to do it like five or six times every single time she had to come in and do it. And it was just awful. Like it was horrible. So make sure that you prepare yourself for that because it honestly was, well I had an epidural, but I've heard a lot of people who have given birth naturally say that that's worse than pushing out the actual baby, even with, like without the epidural. And while I was in the hospital, another thing that happened to my body that was like super weird in my opinion was that my feet and my legs and my ankles were so swollen. And the fact that it was like weird to me was because I never once in my pregnancy had swollen feet. And so the night that I had her, I looked down at my legs and they literally like were so big. And again, I think I have pictures, so I'll post them on the screen so you can see, but they were like humongous. And so I started freaking out and I was worried that like something was wrong with me. And so I asked the, the nurses, I was like, what is going on with my legs? And the nurse was just like, it's normal. Like, I guess she said that my body had a whole bunch of extra fluid and didn't know where to like put the extra fluid. And so it all went to my legs and my ankles and my feet. And like I said, the nurse said that it happened a lot and it was normal, but to me, I was just like, like it was definitely alarming. And it stayed like that for, I think maybe the first week or two, like even when I went home, my feet and legs were so swollen. And so whenever I was sitting down, I had to have my feet elevated and propped up. I was still getting up and down constantly, you know, making my baby's bottles, doing this and that, changing diapers. 
And so I think that that kind of made it worse and prolonged it because I wasn't staying off of my feet like I probably should have. But yeah, it stayed like that for I think like the first two weeks and then it finally went away and I was like so thankful that it went away. So I think those were all of the effects that I had seen that happened to my body while I was still in the hospital. And now we're kind of going to talk about the things that happened to my body once I got Home. So yeah, I thought that all the surprising stuff was behind me, like me being surprised by the shakes, me being surprised by the swollen feet and legs. I thought all of the surprises were over, but no, once I got home, God said that he's going to give me a little bit more surprises to keep me on my toes, and he definitely did. Another surprise was the fact that I was having night sweats, and this is something that has never happened to me in the past. i would never experienced before, but it hit me like a ton of bricks and when I say night sweats I don't mean just like waking up a little bit sweaty because you're hot no I mean I would be sleeping with the fan on with the AC on covers off and I would still wake up in puddles and this went on for a super long time like I think all the way up until she was like five months I was still having the night sweats really really bad there wasn't really anything that I could do to help get rid of it I just kind of had to like deal with it but like I said eventually it did stop and I'm so thankful that it stopped because it was horrible so my original plan was to pump for my daughter and feed her the breast milk. I wasn't too keen on the idea of actually breastfeeding from the breast because of personal reasons. And so I wanted to just exclusively pump for my baby. And I had such high hopes. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for either one of us. And so I had to start the process of letting my breast milk dry up. And it honestly was such a horrible experience. And I didn't know that it was going to be as painful as it was. So once I decided to start transitioning over to formula, I immediately stopped pumping I stopped letting her feed from me I just completely stopped her from even going near my boobs but because I no longer was you know feeding from my breast all of the milk just like was stuck in there and they got so swollen like they were humongous and they got super rock hard like if you like flex your arm and you feel your muscle and like you feel how hard it is that's what my boobs felt like they like they felt so hardly and they were so sore like so the process of letting my milk supply dry out it took about a week and it honestly was so rough but I was able to find some kind of relief and the first thing that provided me some relief was like an over-the-counter pain medicine like Tylenol or Motrin or whatever I was allowed to take and then my husband went and got two small bags of frozen peas and I would just like put them inside of my shirt and have them like icing my boobs and oh my god <laughs> It helped so much because it was so sore, they hurt so bad. So having the frozen peas on my boobs, like, it was nice. It helped a lot. And then another thing that really helped, which I get, I think it's like an old wives tale. I'm not sure if there's like actually any truth behind it, but nonetheless, it still felt amazing. And that was cold cabbage leaves. So again, my husband also bought me a head of cabbage. And so I would just pull off leaves that were like big enough to cover my nipples and then I'll put them in a Ziploc bag and keep them in the fridge for easy storage and so I'll take the cabbage leaf and I'll stick them in my bra and have them covering my nipples and I would just leave them in there until it got wilted and then it was time for me to switch them out but it felt so good oh my it's so it's so weird that like I got relief from peas and cabbage but honestly like it helped a ton and so I definitely do recommend that if you did want to let your supply dry out to so definitely go buy some bags of frozen peas specifically and only for your boobs and then also some cabbage and another piece of advice to kind of make the process go a little bit quicker if you do plan on letting your milk supply dry out is to not touch your boobs at all if you can avoid it I wasn't letting my baby touch my boobs I wasn't letting my husband touch my boobs even though he wanted to so bad and then also in the shower you have to avoid the hot water so all of those things are gonna make your body think that you need to be producing milk for your baby because of the warmth, because of your baby touching it, etc. It's going to think that you need to produce more milk. So your body is just going to keep on producing the milk and then it's going to get even more painful. Even if you're not breastfeeding or you're pumping, if somebody tells you that you have to pump to relieve some of the pain, don't do it. Because again, that's signaling to your body that you need to produce more milk. Even though my milk supply had dried out, they still were leaking for me. So I still had to continue wearing the nipple pads and I think it like finally finally stopped after maybe two and a half months but it was like on and off so it wasn't like it was constantly leaking it was just like every now and then there would be a little bit of leakage so that's something to also be on the lookout for and to be cognizant about so something else that I wanted to talk about in this video is that you are not allowed to have sex for the first six weeks of your postpartum recovery so it's pretty much only because you are at such a high risk of infection and intercourse can you know possibly cause you to have an infection so that's why doctors tell people not to have sex during those first six weeks 
because you can get an infection and it can be fatal in some cases. And next we're going to go ahead and move on to postpartum hair loss. This is something that I really didn't think was going to affect me like at all, but it definitely did. I didn't start losing hair until my daughter was about three months old. My hair was falling out like crazy. I was losing hair like all over my head. I would have like handfuls of hair and it didn't matter what I did. There was nothing that helped it. I tried taking prenatals again. I took biotin, did a deep condition. Nothing was helping my hair. It was just one of those things where I kind of had to like not touch my hair as much and then just kind of wait it out. So I pretty much had to keep my hair in protective styles and just pretty much not even touch it if I could avoid it. But once my daughter got around six months, I started noticing that the amount of hair that would come out of my head was starting to slowly decrease and the very last thing which also I think is the most important part of the postpartum recovery and things that I just wasn't really expecting about postpartum was postpartum depression just like the postpartum hair loss and postpartum depression I had heard about both of them but I didn't think that either one of those was going to affect me so I didn't really I guess pay that much attention to it and it is like kind of hard to talk about but I feel like it is important and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys so that way you all know the effects that it could have on you. But at the very beginning when my daughter first came home from the hospital, if she was awake and she was not eating, she would be crying. So pretty much all day she was just crying and I felt like there was nothing that I could do to console her. And later on we ended up finding out that it was because she had bad reflux issues and so of course we got that situated. But that wasn't until she was about six weeks old when we figured that out that she was having the reflux. And so for the first six weeks it was just like non-stop crying. It was just awful and it just like really affected me hard mentally because it just had the overwhelming feeling of not being a good mother, not being able to take care of my child. And as weird as it sounds, like I feel like I didn't have an emotional connection with my daughter for the first couple of months. You know, it's like, that's my daughter, like, that's my child and I should be able to have that bond with her, but I feel like I didn't. You know, after the first couple months, it got a little bit better, but I still had the feeling of like, not being a good mother kind of like looming over me and even now I still kind of struggle with it on some days but back then it was absolutely horrible and I didn't realize like how bad it was until you know now I'm at this point and looking back now I kind of see how bad it was but it wasn't until my daughter was about eight months when I went to my doctor and I let my doctor know that I was struggling mentally and he ended up prescribing me some medication and honestly it has helped so much and I wish that I had done it sooner because I feel like it would have saved me a lot of heartache and you know I'm not ashamed of it it is what it is but I wanted to make sure that you guys know that it is extremely difficult to deal with and it's something that affects so many women and like I said I was one of those people where I did not think that it was going to happen to me so once you have your baby and you feel yourself kind of changing and not for the better but for the worse, you just want to make sure that you address it and not ignore it for the first eight months like I did. So I think that pretty much wraps it up about all of the things that was kind of surprising to me in the postpartum recovery. And so I was really excited to kind of shed some light on a lot of stuff and hopefully help you guys out and give somebody some tips on what to expect during the postpartum recovery. But that is going to wrap up my video for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every single Wednesday about motherhood and lifestyle. And I would love to have you follow along with me on my motherhood journey. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy and I will see you all next week. Bye!